In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Charles Luanga and his companions. Let us prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are the King of Martyrs. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who surround us and have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church watered by the blood shed by Saints Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Tobit. When the angel Raphael and Tobiah had entered Media and were getting close to Ecbatana, Raphael said to the boy, Tobiah, my brother, he replied, here I am. He said, tonight we must stay with Ragel, who is a relative of yours. He has a daughter named Sarah. So he brought him to the house of Ragel, whom they found seated by his courtyard gate. They greeted him first. He said to them, Greetings to you too, brothers. Good health to you and welcome. And he brought them into his home. Ragel slaughtered a ram from the flock and gave them a cordial reception. When they had bathed and reclined to eat, Tobias said to Raphael, Brother Azariah, ask Ragel to let me marry my kinswoman Sarah. Ragel overheard the words, so he said to the boy, Eat and drink and be merry tonight, for no man is more entitled to marry my daughter Sarah than you, brother, because not even I have the right to give her to anyone but you, because you are my closest relative. But I will explain the situation to you very frankly. I have given her in marriage to seven men, all of whom were kinsmen of ours, and all died on the very night they approached her. But now, son, eat and drink, I'm sure the Lord will look after you both. Tobiah answered, I will eat or drink nothing until you set aside what belongs to me. Raquel said to him, I will do it. She is yours according to the decree of the book of Moses. Your marriage to her has been decided in heaven. Take your kinswoman. From now on, you are her love and she is your beloved. She is yours today and ever after. And tonight, son, May the Lord of heaven prosper you both. May he grant you mercy and peace. Then Ragel called his daughter Sarah, and she came to him. He took her by the hand and gave her to Tobiah with the words, Take her according to the law, according to the decree written in the book of Moses. She is your wife. Take her and bring her safely back to her father. And may the God of heaven grant both of you peace and prosperity. Ragel then called Sarah's mother and told her to bring a scroll so that he might draw up a marriage contract, stating that he gave Sarah to Tobiah as his wife according to the decree of the Mosaic law. Her mother brought the scroll, and Ragel drew up the contract to which they affixed their seals. Afterward, they began to eat and drink. Later, Ragel called his wife Edna and said, My love, prepare the other bedroom and bring the girl there. She went and made the bed in the room as she was told and brought the girl there. After she had cried over her, she wiped away the tears and said, Be brave, my daughter. May the Lord grant you joy in place of your grief. Courage, my daughter. Then she left. When the girl's parents left the bedroom and closed the door behind them, Tobiah arose from the bed and said to his wife, My love, get up. 
Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. She got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. And they began to say, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen, and went to bed for the night. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are right in saying, he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a question for you this morning. How are you at writing letters? Letters of compliment, maybe letters to a loved one. I have to admit, I'm not very good at it. I always think, well, a card will do. Or maybe a nice one sentence compliment it goes a long ways. But I ask, if you've ever written a love letter, did it express what you wanted to say to the, the one you loved? Did it touch the heart of your loved one? Or was it dismissed as nice or precious and put aside like that greeting card? You know, there's an art to writing a love letter. 
Thomas Chiarella, a professor of creative writing at DePaul University, has had his own successes and failures at writing love letters. He offers those tips to anyone to write a good love letter. Remember first, he says, that it is a letter, not a card. And if you want to express a sentiment that you can buy, then what you're feeling is not your love. Sit down and write. Letters take time. They have a rhythm. There are no bullet points, no clipping and pasting. The words have to be yours. And keep in mind that purpose of a love is to really acknowledge, acknowledge someone and their person. But don't overdo the earnestness or the genuineness. Strive for clarity. And remember that a love letter is private, and therefore it can bear some risk. In this way, a love letter is like love itself. So an all well written and thought love letter requires the same focus that Jesus speaks of in today's gospel. To love as God loves demands every element of who we are, our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And like a good love letter, love begins with a commitment of time and attention. And love is expressed in our own words, however clumsy, and unsophisticated they may be. But the words must come from the heart and then move from the paper to relationship. And love is discovered and nurtured in memories of those moments when our love becomes real to us in the goodness and grace of the one we love. And all of our love of God and others forces us in a way, out of our comfort zone, to put our feelings and our wants on the line, to risk being hurt or misunderstood for the sake of the beloved. It's in such a complete, uncomprising love that we most mirror that of God's love, in its selfless and simple generosity and giving, and that we participate in the very life of God. Let us now gather the needs of this day and present them to God the Most High. For all those discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may God open their hearts to the promptings of his Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may the, sign, the Holy Spirit guide them in enacting laws to protect all life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those troubled in marriages, may Christ the bridegroom grant them the graces needed for understanding and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For engaged couples in this faith community, may God bless them in their preparations for the sacrament of holy matrimony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for Jean or Rika, for whom this Mass is offered. May the Lord soon welcome them to the eternal wedding feast of the Lamb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we bring the needs of this day, those spoken, those in our hearts, those yet unknown. We ask that you grant them all through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth will give you many hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you grant the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, your duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when, you're, when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out. And without end, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us a savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Charles Luanga and his companions, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing health. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Christ. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials steadfast in faith and in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have, uh, over the weekend, I met a young seminarian. He's with uh, Father Todd Strange at, during the summer uh, over in Issaquah. And we prayed for, in the beginning, vocations to the priesthood. So keep this young man, Simon is his name, in your prayers. Or maybe you could write him a letter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.